Hey there, Louis Acabalas here. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the August 2022 edition of my Microsoft Teams new feature roundup. In this video series, what I do is I will be previewing some features that were recently released into general availability and some features that were recently made available in the public preview program. Now, before we get started, if you find this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest content that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now in terms of the features that we're gonna be covering in this video, we're gonna start off by looking at a chat with yourself feature that allows you to chat with yourself. Then we're gonna look at Microsoft Teams LinkedIn integration, and then we're gonna move on to the rebranded polling app that allows you to conduct polls in Teams meetings. And then we're gonna look at a new polling type question that is available that allows meeting participants to rate topics, ideas, et cetera. Then we're gonna end off the tutorial by looking at collaborative annotations on shared content in Teams meetings. Now, if you're interested in a particular feature, what I've done is I've included timestamps in the description below, so you can easily just click the timestamp and jump right to that specific feature that might be of interest to you. Now let's go ahead and let's check it out. All right, now we're gonna start off by looking at a new feature that is called Chat With Yourself. Now to access this, you wanna click on the chat icon in the app rail, and what you'll notice here at the very top of my list of chats in the pinned chats is I can now chat with myself. Now, if you do not see this feature in your Microsoft Teams app, that is because at the time of recording, this feature is only available in the public preview program. Now, if you're not part of the public preview program, you can actually enable that within your app. I have a video showing how to do that and you can grab the link to that video in the description below. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do I want to chat with myself? Now, essentially what this feature does is it gives you a space where you can come to either compose draft messages before sending those to individuals. You can send yourself reminders. You can send yourself files, pictures, etc. So this is a nice little spot in the app where you can actually just come and store information that perhaps you need to act on later. Now, what you'll notice at the bottom of the compose box is the options are somewhat limited compared to normal chats. So you can only compose messages, you can attach files, you can use loop components, which I'll talk about in a minute, and you can also incorporate emojis, GIFs, stickers, etc. Now, loop components are essentially components that can be edited in line. So this is a very handy feature that can be used in conjunction with this chat with yourself feature. So you'll notice when I click on this loop component icon, I can insert bulleted lists, checklists, text, tables, or even task lists, and I can go ahead and edit this information in line. So this is where this feature might be handy is you can actually come here and embed a task list that you can just update in real time. And with these loop components, you can actually share them with other individuals. Now that leads me to a really important point. You cannot turn this individual chat into a group chat. So you'll notice at the top of this chat, there is no option to invite other participants. Again, this is really just a space for you to come and store information that you want to access or act on at a later time. Now, the last comment about this feature, what's really handy is that this is a good way for you to share information across devices. So if you are using Microsoft Teams on mobile and desktop and you wanna snap a picture of something and then be able to grab that picture on your computer later, this is where that feature might come in handy for you. So that is the first feature that we looked at here, which is the chat with yourself feature. Let's go ahead and let's look at the next feature that has been recently released. All right, now the next feature that we're going to look at is LinkedIn integration with Microsoft Teams. Now you'll notice here when I click on the more option at the top of this chat, you'll see here in this pop-up menu that LinkedIn is now an option. Now essentially what this does is if you choose to connect your LinkedIn profile to your Microsoft Teams account, it is going to display your LinkedIn profile for others in your organization right from within Microsoft Teams. 
Now you'll see here that I have not connected my account yet. Now I'll scroll down and I'll select my LinkedIn profile here. Now the first time that you're doing this, you're going to need to go through a series of prompts. So I'll go ahead and click connect your LinkedIn account. Now I'll go ahead and click continue to LinkedIn here on this menu. Next, I'm going to be prompted to put in my credentials. Now I'll go ahead and click sign in. And I will go ahead and scroll down here and click accept. And I'll click got it. And you can see here now that my LinkedIn profile is integrated with my Microsoft Teams account. So again, if you choose to connect your LinkedIn profile to your Teams account, individuals in your organization, when they click on that LinkedIn tab on your profile, they'll be able to see your LinkedIn profile right from within Microsoft Teams. Now, intuitively, this makes sense. If you were not aware, Microsoft actually bought LinkedIn a few years ago. So this is just another play on Microsoft's part to fold in that sort of professional social network in their digital collaboration tools. Now, a few additional notes about this feature. One, this feature is generally available. So it is available for the masses to use. And the caveat to that is that your organization, specifically your Microsoft administrators, have to have enabled this functionality in your Microsoft environment. So if you aren't seeing that LinkedIn tab, check with your administrators first to see if they've disabled that feature. And if they haven't disabled it, then it's likely that your Microsoft tenant or your Microsoft environment hasn't received this feature yet. Now let's go ahead and let's look at the next new feature. All right, now the next new feature pertains to polling in Microsoft Teams meetings. Now I'll go ahead and click into this meeting invitation here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the add a tab button. Now, what I wanna draw your attention to is that Microsoft recently rebranded Microsoft Forms in the context of Teams meetings. So the app is now called Polls. So if you are looking to create polls for your meetings ahead of time, or even when you get into the meeting, you're no longer looking for the Microsoft Forms app, but rather you're looking for the Polls app. Now I'll go ahead and add this to the meeting and I'll go ahead and click Save. Now, for all intents and purposes, the Polls app is identical to the Microsoft Forms app that you would have used previously when you were creating polls in your meetings with some minor, minor changes. Now, the obvious change that you'll see here is that now your suggested polls are not featured in the middle of the screen here, but rather off to the right-hand side of the app in this suggestions pane. So if you did want to go ahead and use one of these pre-built polls, you could just go ahead and click on them. Now, if you did wanna create a new poll ahead of time, you just wanna go ahead and click on the new poll button and you can go ahead and create your poll in the exact same manner that you did before. Now, the other new feature that was added to this polls app is an additional question type. So you'll notice here that in addition to multiple choice, quizzes, word clouds, you now have a rating type question. Now a rating type question essentially allows you to ask your meeting participants to rate some topic, some idea, some piece of content. So what you can do here is you can go ahead and put in your question. And so I've gone ahead and put a question in here that reads, what do you think about the new process improvement idea? And then you can go ahead and set the number of levels. Now to do that, you wanna click on the level dropdown. Now you can set this from a minimum of two levels all the way to a max of five. And levels just refers to the scale that individuals can rate your question or your option or your topic on. Now you also have the ability to change the symbol that is used for rating. So you'll notice by default, it's set to star. You can change this to a number. You can change it to a thumbs up uh, and other different options here as well. Now, when you go ahead and you launch your poll, it's going to launch and function the exact same way as other question types. So you can see here that I have my poll displayed and I can just go ahead and hover my cursor over the different rating options and I can click on the option that I wanna select and then I can go ahead and click submit. And then this is going to tabulate an average of all the submissions and then give you sort of an average rating for that topic or idea.
Now I've gone ahead and I've joined this meeting. And the last thing that I want to call your attention on as it pertains to the polls app is again, that when you are trying to launch or view surveys in Teams meetings, again, you're not looking for Microsoft Forms anymore. You just want to click on the polls icon that is now embedded in the meeting bar. So if I click on this polls button, again, this is going to bring up the polls pane in the meeting, and then I can work with this just like I could when it was still branded Microsoft Forms. All right, now let's go ahead and let's look at the next new feature. All right, now the last new feature that we're going to look at are collaborative annotations in Microsoft Teams meetings. Now, before this feature was released, only the presenter would be able to annotate on a shared screen, which was a big limitation. Now what Microsoft has done is they finally implemented the ability for meeting participants to annotate on content that is being shared. Now, in order to use this, the presenter has to actually enable this in the context of the meeting. So I'll go ahead and click on my share button. An important note is unfortunately, this doesn't work with PowerPoint Live yet, or even when you're sharing an individual window, you can only enable collaborative annotations when you're sharing your entire screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my screen here. Now you'll notice at the top of the window here, when I place my cursor on the border, that this shared content controls menu appears. Now you'll notice this new option here. And if I hover my cursor over it, the pencil with the little squiggle, you'll see that it says start annotation. Now, if I click this, this is going to permit meeting participants to collaboratively annotate on the shared screen. So you can see here that I'm able to do this. And there's also this annotation bar that almost resembles the drawing bar from the Microsoft Whiteboard app. So Microsoft has implemented the ability for meeting participants to annotate on shared content. But again, it is restricted to only content that is being shared when you share your entire desktop. So that's it. This was the August 2022 edition of the Microsoft Teams new feature roundup. I am curious to hear what you thought about these new features. Will you use them? Do you think that they require further improvement? And how about letting me know what new feature is top of mind for you? What is it that you want Microsoft to see? Please drop that in the comments below. Last but not least, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the new content that I'm publishing. I'm Louis Akabelis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.